as you all know, this summit covers three tracks with over 60 speakers, 100 brands, and an attendee count of over 1,000 delegates with a great networking opportunity. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank our platinum partners, Apps Flyer. And with that, I would like to commence with our next session of the day. Our next session is a panel discussion on the topic, Our Podcasts, the New Battleground in Music Streaming. And for the same, I would like to welcome our esteemed panelists. First, our moderator, Mr. Gautam Raj Anand, CEO and founder, Hub Hopper. Hi, Gautam. Hey, how are you? So glad to be here. Thank you for being here. And yes. along with our esteemed panelists, first we have Mr. Sri Raman Tyagarajan, CEO, Avas.com. Hi, Sri. Hi, Welcome. everyone. Thank you so much. Good to be here. Thank you. Ms. Somini Sridhara Paul, Senior Vice President, Hangama. Hi, Somini. Thanks for being Hi. here Hi. today. Yes. And Mr. Vipul Bhatwal, VP Podcast and Monetization Products, Ghana. We welcome you, Mr. Vipul. Thank you for being here. Hi, everyone. Look forward to this discussion. Thank you. I would now request Mr. Gautam to please take over the session. Uh, so I think before we started, I'd love to thank this wonderful panel uh, that we have before us today. We're very lucky to actually have uh, the various different facets of the podcasting industry on one panel itself. Uh, we have so many who's worked a lot with creators over the past, I would say, decade. You have Vipul, who arguably uh, is in charge of one of the largest streaming platforms in the country. Uh, you've got uh, Sri Raman, who has worked extensively with brands, with voice and with IoT devices. And you've got myself, uh, who has worked uh, a lot with sort of trying to democratize podcast creation and building software to enable um, and sort of unlock the industry. Um, I think before we sort of jump into asking questions, it's important that I set the stage uh, for this discussion. Um, and the best way to do that is to talk about what's transpired over the last 18 to 24 months. It's very evident that in the last 18 to 24 months, there's been complete anarchy and chaos uh, and fervor, fervor in the podcasting industry. You've seen, of course, Spotify acquiring Gimlet, Anchor, Podcast. Um, you've seen them acquire the Joe Rogan experience. You've seen them acquire, most recently, Megaphone. You've seen another large entity coming up with SiriusXM acquiring Pandora, uh, acquiring Simplecast, and iHeartMedia acquiring Voxnest. You've also seen companies like Shimalia investing in companies like Himalaya. You've seen companies like Blueberry, um, in the West, teaming up with an audio burst in Israel. And most recently, we've even seen companies like Twitter jumping into the game with the acquisition of Breaker and uh, Amazon with the acquisition of Wondery. So clearly, there is some sort of madness and craziness that's taking place across the world. And now when you sort of look at this sort of excitement that is already occurring across the world, and you transpose it onto India and you try to ask yourself, well, if all of this excitement exists in the West, is there an argument that can be made to sort of speak for why podcasting would do well in India? And when you look at those variables and you see things like high commuting time in India, when you see things like a large amount of time being spent at home in India, large amount of languages in one location, low cost of data, a large amount of um, sort of uh, individuals with the intent of creation, low literacy barriers of the medium, low language barriers of the medium, all of these make the argument for why podcasting is and already is going to become the sort of large battleground for the media space uh, for the days to come. So with further, without further ado, I'm going to jump into um, speaking with the panel that we have before us across the different facets of why this is such an exciting space to be looking at and what we should be sort of seeing in the next 18 to 24 months to come. I'm going to start with uh, Sri Raman. Uh, fun fact about Sri Raman, he calls um, his friends, call him by the name Ram and he himself has said that his colleagues call him by the name Sri. I'm going to take the liberty of calling him Ram through the uh, course of this panel. Uh, so jumping with uh, uh, my first question to you, Ram, um, why should brands be excited about podcasting? What sets it apart from other mediums in this space? 
Thanks, Gautam. Hey, uh, everyone, good to be here. Uh, look, it's come, the, you know, brands keep saying that uh, storytelling, you know, we have seen that uh, some brands even have invented uh, or, or invested uh, money in creating world's longest TV commercial. I think Tata Sky did that some, some years ago. It was like a uh, three or four minute long story. Of course, uh, ads are always seen as an interruption in whatever a person is doing. And uh, unless, of course, ads are extremely, extremely lovable, uh, people usually skip it or they get away and use it as a break to do something else, right? But when it comes to podcast, uh, the the every every single person who loves or appreciates anything audio, uh, whether it is podcast, whether it is audio story, audio shows, however we want to call it in different names, they are really committed to listening to those, right? And uh, I mean, see, it, it may not be. Uh, as big as video is today, because video is like uh, six to 60, everyone, it appeals to everyone, but podcast Jeff definitely appeals to the strong uh, aficionados who, who really love audio, right? And uh, it's really an um, interesting way to reach them because they are saying, they're clearly saying, look, serve me in audio. They, they want to be served in audio and they want to give their attention to audio. Now, uh, one myth that people have is uh, they immediately advertisers, especially uh, brands, especially have is okay. Can we can we can we look at audio inventory? Can we look at audio ads? You can, but again, that's coming from you know transposing radio into uh, this entire space. It's not really accurate way of doing it because in radio mostly it's drive time. People are driving and they don't flip station so often. You know you are, you are partly listening, partly driving. You're okay with that. But podcast is little longer in format and people have chosen what they want to listen. It's not curated, programmed by someone else and aired to you. You have selected what you want to play. Now, you need to think of telling audio story or creating compelling audio experiences, weaving your brand into it and not just think about it as ad insertions and not equate it with a display campaign, not equate it with a performance campaign. That's for definitely not going to happen. Uh, so yeah, uh, people who love audio are are like the definite lovers of audio and mm. advertisers should mm. respect the medium and you know uh, craft no, their thank you, Ram. yeah in the format yeah, that that Thanks. that really sort of i mean thank you for illuminating uh why brand should be excited about audio and i also completely do agree with you in the fact that the terminology of podcast is in itself very bastardizing um you know it sort of de-alienates a lot of indians from a a medium that they've already had a very long history with and a very, very strong association with, whether in the form of Hanuman Chalisa, Gran Sahib, the stories that they heard from their grandparents, uh, cricket commentary that they consumed growing up. Nobody associates that as a podcast when, in fact, it is a podcast. Um, and it still, unfortunately, plays with the aficionados and the niche. So that's why I'm sort of taking this uh, point from here and I move to Whipple. Um, and Vipul, you are arguably in a position to change that. You're arguably in a position to take podcasting mainstream, uh, take it to sort of the country at large and break the myth that podcasting is only meant for a very specific part of uh, the community. Um, so tell me, what, what do you feel is the role of large platforms such as yourself um, in, in sort of bridging the gap and, and sort of taking this medium to, to the country and, and, and beyond? To start with, when I just pick up from the point that you mentioned, eventually see podcast is just a spoken word content, right? In which the country has been listening for a long time. And the word podcast itself probably may not be uh, I mean, able to more than 10% of the Indians, but at least Knowingly, unknowingly, they have been listening to spoken word content from the very beginning in the form of radio, in the form of, you know, various other audio media. Now, obviously, when music streaming platforms, when they introduce podcasts uh, on uh, their platform, there is some sort of captive audience available to leverage uh, the media. Is it as large as music? I don't think so. But is there an overlap in terms of that can be leveraged? Yes, there is. Now, that's the role that platform like ours have to pay, play. 
to you know take this format to a larger uh, audience in a manner that what we have seen till now at least is that though let's say not a small portion of the music listeners engage with podcasts but those who do uh, they engage very deeply uh, and to shri raman's point that uh, what should brands take away from that is that you know the metric that a brand should look at when advertising via a podcast on a medium like ours or an else should be more related to a very strong brand recall from from an audience which is highly engaged but may not have uh, may not have the same sort of volume as music you know uh, it is more about the quality of the audience than the quantity of the audience at least in mm. india you know, you know you talked about the examples in the west but you no know, west to what uh 14 years to get where we are today or maybe slightly lesser than that but i am sure india will do that maybe in 5 to 6 years or much lesser than that but the content has to be right for the indian audience you know you cannot just blindly replicate what the west has done in terms of content because the kind of content that that does well in india from a spoken word category perspective is very different Um, and that is where you know at Ghana when we launched uh, this category, we approached it very differently. I mean, we thought it like it was just a radio that a user is listening to, and uh, in that radio, I mean, how can we just put any sort of spoken word content, uh, which could be from various things that you talked about, Bata, or it could be you know anything that a user listens to in his daily life. It could be easy listening. It could be more attentive listening, or it could be you know. Uh, a t- something akin to a TV show, like you know, which is uh, like a soap opera where, where an episode is coming every day or every every week. So these are the formats that are going to do well: localized content, uh, highly engaged audience, uh, strong with very strong brand recall, and that is how you know advertising also has to be structured around this format. And you know. Mm. Correct. I think a platform like ours can only succeed if there is evangelization from various players in the ecosystem, uh, which includes, you know, various ad agencies, brands. Uh, uh, you know, when they basically today also when they talk about advertising via podcast, I think they keep looking at the same metric, uh, which they look for music, which is actually not correct because. It's a very different medium, and the West has learned it. And West is actually using podcast very well. Agreed. Uh, the right audience. Maybe we should also start doing it. So I think uh, I think it was Einstein that said, "If you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it'll live its life believing that it's stupid." And unfortunately, I think we do a big disservice to podcasting by constantly trying to trace it against the same metrics that we trace other media media formats. when it's such a beautiful and such an incredible medium uh, god only knows how much i am in love with it but vipul what i really like is that you spoke uh, like a true uh, entrepreneur in the way that you spoke about how localization is key um, and it's not just about borrowing from the west and fun fact for everybody that's listening here um, vipul has dabbled in uh, a number of different things he has he's been a startup guy through and through uh he's dabbled in the grocery space he's uh, uh in hyper local grocery he's dabbled in the refurbished goods space and now as a as another project he, he's coming to sort of um you know turn podcasting on its head and bring localization to it so very glad that you're part of this ecosystem vipul and uh so taking from what vipul said i'm going to move to you somini um one of the main issues uh and the only way that a demand side platform like gana can actually succeed is if on the supply side creators feel more comfortable creators feel more confident and creators feel less scared to create podcasts uh um, right. now you for somebody who's been working with artists aloud uh, and with hangama for uh north of a decade uh you've already dealt with you know sort of the trepidation that exists in a community of creators in the past how do you think we're going to cross this 
um, you know, sort of fear that currently resides in the minds of creators of how should I start, where should I start, what should I do? Because the technology exists. Um, this is me plugging Hubhopper in the center. But but uh, but <laughs> what is it that that one needs to do at an ecosystem level to sort of give, make people overcome their fear of podcasting? So, you know, I'll kind of make this parallel to the way the independent scene is, right? So when we started in 2010, there was nobody else really promoting independent music. Today, we've already seen five to six players who are only focusing on distributing independent content. So obviously, the opportunity for the creator has really grown when you look at the music space now. Music also is a format which is so much more easier to create. You know, I mean, if you go to places like in the Northeast, in every house, there's somebody who plays guitar and can sing, right? And the concept of doing original uh, music is is not uh, alien to people now. You know, of course, you still have people doing covers when, you know, even when we used to uh, program artists for venues and stuff, they used to do covers. But they also were always keen to push in some original work to show their style. Uh, when you talk about the podcast uh, angle, you know, first of all, creators who go beyond uh, a particular art form, you know, it, it is like she said, it is storytelling. It is the ability to uh, you know, I think a, a big example is someone like Lesh Mishra, you know, the way he has managed to take his concept from stations to stations. And I think he's also now available on Spotify. And, you know, I believe that when it comes to uh, from a consumer point of view, I think podcasts uh, at the start are going to need some popular faces, you know, uh, to really get people's attention. And if you're able to build that interest for the consumer, that's the way you're going to be able to then throw ideas to them under a podcast and not be so dependent on a name. You know, it's the same format of an OTT service. You know, you you've got uh, I mean, today you take the example of Netflix. It started with other people's content. And once they had grabbed the attention from a product point of view, you know, they went about making their own. So. I think even for someone like you, for example, Gautam, today you're aggregating and you've kind of democratized uh, democratized it. It goes to Ghana, it goes to Angama. You know, there are various platform players. But I think what is going to be also unique, and that of course comes from your partner's point of view, is where each platform, uh, you know, starts doing something which is original to, to what they want to offer to their uh, audience. You know, it's like when, when I used to be a Channel V and there was MTV, finally it was the way that same music video was being presented by each channel that made the difference. I mean, a lot of times if you didn't see the logo, you wouldn't know, you know, whose channel it was. And that is where you saw a lot of these channels putting in a lot of money, investment, creativity in terms of creating some kind of a face value for themselves. So I think podcasts, at least from the democratic approach, is going to land up being that. So even if two different platforms have the same content because the aggregator is one, how are you presenting that to the consumer for him to want to watch it on your platform? I mean, say Ahangama, Noronagana, or vice versa, right? Um, yeah. It's very, yeah. very, it's very new. You know, uh, podcast is going to take some time for people to actually, uh, you know, sit up and look at it as a content, uh, which, because India, if you actually see is first a music uh, consumer and thanks to YouTube is a video, uh, you know, music video consumer, uh, you know, so I think for someone to then look at not listening to music and focusing only on podcast content, uh, it's going to take time before it becomes mass of and commercial. Of but I think, I think what's, what's beautiful to see is I think it's the only format that I have seen so many players lap up in such a short time. I didn't yeah. see that for independent music. I mean, I still don't see it for independent music. I know, for example, Ghana, I think you've acquired OK Listen, right? So, uh, you know, in one sense, that's their offering for it. But that happened, like, I think almost 10 years after OK Listen uh, launched, right? And you have someone like Geo Savan that does artist originals. Uh, but it's it's been more like a label route, you know? It's not democratic. But I think the podcast piece, everybody has suddenly said, 
we've got to be there and we've got to be there because that's the next big thing. So, uh, so I think the start comes from the media offering it to consumers. Then of course the content and how is that content being presented, even if it's the same content, you know, mm. like I said, the example of a music video being put on MTV or channel V, the VJ that presents it kind of differentiates it, the packaging around it differentiates it, you know? So, yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't know if, that kind of answer your question. Oh, no, it does. It's it. I think it's an amazing answer. And uh, I do believe that one of my sort of hopes and dreams with this space is that it's less about people working in divergent fashion and more about collaboration and more about people coming together and building this industry up before uh, sort of arguing about who owns which piece of which pie. This has been something that I've been uh, a very large proponent of since the get-go. Um, and I'm very happy to see that there's a large amount of collaboration that takes place in the podcasting space. Uh, right. So moving uh, back back to uh, Ram, uh, fun fact before I ask you a question, I'm going to do a fun fact with each question that I do. Uh, you won't be able to tell, but uh, Ram's actually a big foodie. Uh, and he, he loves he loves food, he loves photography. And uh, for the few of you who don't know, he's actually a mentor for quite a few startups across the world. Um, and I'm 100% and, I'm, and you did this with Google Launchpad, didn't you? Yeah. So uh, I'm sure across your experiences, you wait for my segue right now. Um, so across your experiences, you must have come across a lot of growth in the IoT space, a lot of growth in the smart speaker space. And I've seen that um, Avaaz actually works tremendously with companies like Amazon Alexa and with uh, Google Home um, and, uh, and others. Uh, what do you think is the sort of, uh, uh, what do you think is the piece that uh, smart speakers and IoT devices play uh, in the podcasting sort of growth or the podcasting fairy tale in India or do they at all? They they definitely do, and uh, I love your moderating style with a lot of anecdotes in between. It takes away the uh, afternoon sleepy time for many people, I suppose. Right? So, <laughs> uh, no, thank so, you. Uh, uh, Gautam, the company we, that we run, Agraya Technologies, is a parent of ours. Uh, four years ago, we started working on the smart speaker space. Uh, you know, it was very simple that you know, mobile phone came and went. And uh, because it was so easy to use, right, from computer mouse, now you could touch a screen. So the ease of UI made a lot more people adopt technology. That's why smartphone become what it is today. And when voice technology came, we said, okay, you don't even have to touch a screen to talk to it, talk to technology now as interface. You could simply speak, right? And, and that prophecy has self-fulfilled. Uh, today, voice assistant is in your phone. It's in your thousand rupees geophone, feature phone. It's in car, inside the car, in your kitchen, in your watch, it's everywhere. And uh, we realized just one simple fact that uh, in, in those smart speakers and those voice everywhere, user input, when humans talk to the bot, uh, that is voice, and we call that as voice tech. But output content you receive is audio content. Uh, and mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's been the simple equation that we saw. And, uh, you know, three years ago when we started working on ours, we saw there was acute shortage of supply side of audio content in Indian languages. And we said, okay, why don't we play it to uh, play it on the supply side? Because the demand clearly exists. And that's how ours came to be, right? So today, uh, if you say, Alexa, tell me a Hindi joke, uh, you will get a joke. And that comes from us. It's the highest used skill in the country, a uh, second highest, sorry, first one is Anuman Chalisa, no one can beat that. Um, the second highest is uh, Hindi jokes that comes from us, so on and so on. I'm sure your content as well too. Angama has a lot of content on Alexa. Uh, Ghana has uh, created Google, uh, Ghana Antakshari on Google Assistant. Uh, again, yeah. That's yeah. we worked on. Uh, I'm just saying, so you see the relation between voice and audio, right? Uh, so it's it's really a big driver force multiplier for podcast. Yes, I, I couldn't agree more. And I mean, we we uh, saw the same when we made, uh, there was a uh, skill that we made called uh, the stories of Mahabharat with Alexa. And, uh, you know, the, I mean, when we had created it to, you know, two quarters hence, the sheer amount of growth that we'd seen was just staggering. Um, and ever since these AI enabled technologies have become more and more platform agnostic. 
so that you can actually access Alexa from your car or you can access Alexa from your headphones. It's actually taken this, um, taken this ability and this medium further beyond than we'd even anticipated when we just started. Uh, so I couldn't agree more with you on that. Uh, and let's see what Google does next when it comes to sort of integrating, uh, you know, uh, Google AI with everything that you do. Uh, so now moving, uh, moving back to you, Whipple, um, the anecdote that this is not a fantastic anecdote, but it's an anecdote nonetheless. Um, uh, Whipple is actually, uh, he is a, he's an IAM grad and he, uh, actually, uh, is today a very, very, very proud and uh, a proud father of a beautiful, beautiful young boy. Uh, Vipul, what is your son's name? Uh, I, I didn't get a chance to find that out during this. His name is Anay. Anay. His name is? Anay. Ah, okay, awesome. He's a very sweet boy. Uh, I wanted to uh, sort of jump into uh, one of the things that very much interests me about the podcasting space globally, you've seen a series of consolidations take place. Like it's just, it's been crazy. Over the last 18 months, you've seen a billion dollars worth of consolidation take place. I touched upon it in the beginning, but literally from everybody, from your uh, Amazon to your Twitter to Sirius XM to Pandora to, um, I mean, Sirius XM is now Pandora to iHeartMedia to uh, Spotify. Everybody is sort of buddying up. Um, so tell me, do you believe that the podcast space in India is going to also converge in the same fashion? I mean, we saw the first signs of that happening in October last when IVM was acquired by Pratilipi. Uh, but do you believe that that is basically a indicator of things to come? Or do you think that this space is still going to have divergent entities for much longer? Um, so I just wanted your thoughts on that. I don't, I don't think the Indian ecosystem has too many entities going after this space, right? I mean, unlike the West where the category existed for 10 years and too many, you know, host, like in terms of hosting platforms or podcast networks, I think US has more than 50 networks while India has what, two networks or three networks. So, uh, I mean, like, will the consolidation in India be driven by the existing existence of too many entities? I would say no, but will it be driven by other motives? There is a possibility. You know, in the US, the consolidation happened because there were certain large platforms who wanted to get into the space and they saw that there were many players available who and who had the experience and the skill which could be used and they were acquired. Uh, in India, whether that experience and skill is available in abundance, I'm not sure. I think that skill and has to be created. But those who have some sort of head start in that, uh, those entities who have some sort of head start in that creation of skill and uh, whatever is needed to succeed in this space, they would definitely have an advantage as and when the consolidation uh, or an acquisition spree kicks in uh, for, for a different reason when compared to the rest. Understood. Understood. Uh, concise. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, jumping to so many, uh, fun fact about so many again, uh, she actually let this slide right before we got into the panel. So I already knew that so many had been a singer in a previous lifetime. Uh, and she, uh, sang quite a bunch of songs, but what she let slip, which I'm sure she's already regretting is that so many has a pop video of her own. Uh, which is somewhere in existence on the world wide web. And I urge the viewers of this to please, please uh, take your shovels and find it um, and share it with a lot of us. Um, but I mean, jokes aside, Somani has done an incredible, um, you know, sort of, she's, she's done an incredible job with sort of giving people courage and, and artists courage in this space and being a, Torch better for people in this space when nobody was. Um, and, you know, uh, we all have a big debt to thank her for, for this. One of the things that I wanted to ask you though, Somini, which was that in the West, as with most, uh, most things, there was a big, big, big uh, tsunami of something called the Hollywoodification of podcasts. All right. Uh, in which every famous 
man woman child and grandmother decided that they need to jump on the podcasting bandwagon uh, so overnight you saw success stories like kevin hart and you saw other success stories like uh, you know oprah's podcast super soul and obama's podcast uh, but you you also saw a little bit of uh, you saw a little bit of that sort of uh, concept being done to death do you believe that india needs a bollywoodification of podcasts to drive this medium or do you believe that we need more wnyc uh, type uh, creators and more avazes and more uh, you know podcast networks that are i would say purists in the fashion um uh, to sort of make this make this industry succeed so okay i'll give you an example of a conversation that i was actually having today uh with sunita rao okay uh an artist who's had a huge success even today even though falguni pathak sings the song in every navratri it is that pari hume song that is still very strong and you know uh the, the current generation may not have heard of her but she's been she's been there she's been doing her stuff even in theater and she's got her fan following she discussed with me a concept and she said you know i want to do i i i want to work on this idea and my feedback to her was two things i said look if you want to do this for the love of it and you're not looking at it from a commercial sense go with what you have i said the moment you want to look at either being paid for it or making money out of it you need to be able to create something which is going to be a clutter breaker now the sad truth is when you try to stay to the authenticity of something and the purity of something it's a long journey you know to even get the attention i mean look at the amount of content we have today uh, i mean when i watch a video i'm only i'm largely watching only netflix and i don't have the time to watch more than one episode or two episodes in a day you know and there's so much to watch so i'm just adding stuff to my list so i think from the platform point of view from a business point of view there is a need to be able to create content or have content with popular faces whether that's bollywood or whether it's other celebs i think that is debatable uh, i think i saw uh, a content that you had created on hop hop with sohali khan right to me she's not she's not a celeb but she's got really a recall right she's got there is interest for people to know oh what is she doing right so i think uh, see there's always going to be a case ki if if one particular model works everybody wants to follow it i think creatively mm. one still needs to make sure that you're doing something different and you're trying to create some kind of uniqueness but i don't see any harm in having any kind of you know uh, uh what do you say novelty value to it and if that novelty value is a face or a name it just adds so much value because uh, you can only have people trust the quality of your content without these trump cards if you've been able to gather their attention and right, right. now everybody yeah so everybody who is trying to get the big names uh, are only doing it with the intention of let me at least let people know that i exist I mean, tomorrow, say Shri, who has built his own, you know, platform. If he needs to get people to to kind of stay with him, uh, he's going to have to serve. It's 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 a case of supply and demand. Yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. Today, when I look at artists allowed, I want the brand to be bigger than every artist. But I can afford to do that because I have multiple other revenue streams that I'm playing with, where I am working with the bigger names as well. right but as a destination i want the artist to be someone who feels i am an artist allowed rather than artist allowed saying i have this xyz artist i understand so, i understand you know i mean that's the way i look at it no no definitely and you know i i mean the reason i asked this is because i had done a study i was very i was very curious about this fact because i there have been podcasters there have been creating in the space for north of a decade you got a podcast and even aaron mankey you got richard mcclain smith you got i mean these are the real torch bearers of this media i mean they've been creating since 2008 when it was still called an audio blog before apple came and created the word podcast uh so i mean 
And then in 2019 and 2020, you suddenly saw a flurry of everybody and, um, and everybody's grandmother wanting to start a podcast. So I wanted to study the consumption trends actually of, of how these podcasts were doing. And what was very interesting to see was outside of a few very successful ones that stood the test of time, a lot of the Hollywoodification based podcasts had an incredible spike on episode one, an incredible spike on episode two. And you began to see a plateauing from episode three, four, and then downwards. And so it defeated the purpose. So it created your tent pole excitement in the beginning, but the retention value, which is what I'm sure a lot of these platforms came into it for and were paying top dollar for, they weren't being able to maintain. Uh, so that's why I wanted your thoughts on this. I jump back now to Sri uh, or Ram, uh, rather Ram, uh, not Sri. Um, but this time, instead of giving you an anecdote about Ram, I'm going to give you an anecdote about myself because otherwise it's, it's, it's not going to be a fair and balanced, uh, 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 you know, panel. Uh, quick anecdote about myself is that when I was 12 years old, the only thing that I wanted to be more than anything else is I wanted to be Jay Leno and I wanted to actually conduct and actually host talk shows. Um, and all my life, uh, ever since Hub Opera, I've always been on the receiving end, being a speaker at panels. And today I'm being given the honor of being the host of this panel. So thank you guys very, very much for letting me live out a childhood fantasy of mine. Um, so now I move to your question, Ram. Um, and this is a little bit of a, a, a painful one because this is one that we're all asked in the podcasting industry. And this one is that. You know, whenever you go to a brand, the brand's biggest concern and the brand's biggest, you know, uh, question is that the amount of data that you're able to get or garner from podcasts uh, is, you know, a lot lower than when it is compared to video or when it's compared to uh, image or even when it's compared to text. Sure, it's better than the radio. This is the argument that's thrown at us. But it's still not giving us enough insight into our consumer and demographic, it's sociographic and psychographic uh, that, you know, it creates a compelling enough argument against video or audio. So how does a podcasting industry right now that doesn't have a defensibility when it comes to this question, how do you actually combat it? What do you say to this? Thanks, uh, Gautam. Uh, this problem, uh, unfortunately, is true. But only if you are disseminating your podcast through RSS indication. Uh, for us at ours, this is not a problem at all because we are completely first party data company. Uh, we have our own app, our own website, our own set of box, our own everything, right? So we really get a lot of, uh, I mean, about 63 or 64 different data points from consumers. Uh, time of release, completion, stuff, raising food, gender, uh, affinity, interest, there are other, um, you know, uh, experiences of how they use the app, you know, which sections do they navigate, so many different, extremely rich uh, data that we are privy to. Uh, now, of course, uh, uh, you know, again, if you compare it to any form of other digital media, yes, there isn't really uh, a great. Uh, what do you call attribution model here or, or, or getting the entire consumer modeling here but i definitely think uh, it is improving because we know that almost all the big players in the industry are consolidating like you begin with there's a lot of ad tech companies that's being acquired now uh adswiss has as adswiss is now part of uh, pandora and serious if i'm not wrong uh even trinity is i art I art radio owns Trinity. Spotify has invested in two companies now. So everyone is taking the ad tech seriously because they know that uh, if you are just giving top level uh, useless metadata to advertisers, they're not going to be interested in uh, yeah. you know, uh, continuing this. So I'm sure this is being uh, resolved imminently. Uh, but I'm generally saying it in, in terms of industry, but like I said, we saw this coming and this was one reason we never ever took RSS seriously. Uh, we really feel it is a 20 year old 40 year old. Okay, awesome. No, thank you so much for that. Um, okay, now we sort we move back to Whipple. Uh, my next question for Whipple, um, and before I jump into my question, uh, quick, quick anecdote. Um, 
in preparation of this panel, I uh, about two hours ago went and got my hair cut because I looked at myself in the mirror and saw that I was looking incredibly disheveled and I needed to put on a nice and handsome face for you people. And unfortunately, this is all that God gave me to work with. So I, I went and got my hair cut. Uh, so moving to Whipple, uh, Whipple, there is a big uh, argument for the uh, cross-selling ability of podcasts um in in large ott platforms it 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 gives uh platforms the ability to diversify uh it gives the uh, platforms the ability to cross sell from one media format to another and i see that ghana has actually been working on quite a few different mediums in tandem you guys are working on, on short video you guys are working on music and you guys are working on podcast so i just wanted to understand are we seeing the end of the one media format play on, on a platform? Uh, and is are we going to continue to see a future of cross-selling of different media formats on one single platform? If I am an advertiser and uh, if I have to, eventually my goal is to reach the audience, right? I, I don't think the advertiser ever asked me that, are you reaching it through a podcast? Or are you reaching my audience through a song or through something else, right? So from that perspective, at least, you know, most of our targeted uh, campaigns, they are mostly driven by the audience and they run across formats. Uh, so does that help? Yes. But, you know, at least in our case, like music is much bigger than the other formats. So today, most of the audience data is driven by music. But generally speaking, like when the categories are in a steady state and each one has evolved and grown, I think most of the advertising on platform like ours, which are doing multiple formats, will be driven by audience. So obviously, each format offers some sort of advantages in terms of, uh, you know, you know, exposing the brand to a certain set of audience, which we talked about in the first question. But, you know, does the brand care that, you know, my campaign has reached my audience through music or through podcast? At least not today. I mean, uh, they are okay as long as I'm reaching the audience. So maybe when podcast and other categories, that if I talk about Ghana, have grown much, much bigger. And then, you know, we may see something else, but today at least it's mostly audience driven. Okay, I, I respect that answer. I think that's a great answer. Uh, and now moving to my final question, uh, and this question is is for so many. Um, I wanted to ask you, and you touched upon this a little bit. Um, basically, you worked for a very long time with artists allowed. Uh, yes. And you worked with different, different creators and you worked with different, different uh, repetitions and fears of theirs. What are certain learnings that you feel can be adopted and borrowed from the time that you spent with artists allowed and you continue to spend with artists allowed that can be adopted by the podcasting space and creators in the community? So uh, it's interesting that you put this question because I had a point that I want to make earlier, which kind of merges into this. Uh, you know, when we talk about people pop being popular in a particular category, like when we say, you know, some of the names that you mentioned with regards to be being really popular podcasters, right? Uh, you see this even with people who were very popular in TikTok or very popular in YouTube, right? I think there was still some kind of an overlap happening between YouTubers and TikTokers. But the way digital has grown today, you know, it has made TV become more of if you are on TV, you are great and you're good and you've actually been kind of moderated and then brought in. But digital koi bhi kar sakta hai. Now, the challenge is exactly that, you know, if you are a creator, you need to build your community and your asset and your following and your popularity across the different avenues that there are for you to then take on something new and be accepted for what you want to present, you know. Uh, we've seen, of course, you know, there have been, there've been like, if you just go back to Bollywood, for example, we know someone like a Sonu Nigam, he's a brilliant singer and everybody loves his music. He's not cracked it as an actor, right? 
but then you have people like Farhan Akhtar who has managed to create popularity for them for himself as a singer, as an actor, as a director, as a producer. So I think the point I'm trying to make is if you are a creator and you believe that, you know, you can build uh, a fan following and a popularity for you, I think you need to look at yourself as somebody building that across different platforms, across different form factors to really then say that I am a successful creator, you know, because you may be the biggest in the podcasting world, but you may not be recognized outside of that. And we've seen a lot of examples of that, especially when it comes to YouTubers. They have huge fan following, but nobody in the Bharat side of India knows who they are or vice versa, you know. Uh, so that, that's my take on how I believe creators need to look at themselves, uh, you know, because podcast to me is just another medium. And today you see a lot of podcasters creating video versions of what they're doing as well. So you're already thinking audio and video together. It's just both of them get kind of branded as podcast. You know? Perfect. Perfect. So guys, we actually have uh, three questions from uh, the audience. And I'm going to throw these questions out and thank you so many uh, for that. I completely agree with you. Um, I'm going to throw these three questions out um, and anybody that feels uh, wishes to answer that question, please, uh, you can take it up. So starting with question number one, um, and, and this is a wonderful question. I, I kick myself for not having brought it up myself. Uh, what does the industry do to make the podcasting space a little bit more interactive two way the podcasting industry is constantly being uh, yeah. it's been uh, uh, lauded but it's also been uh, criticized for there not being enough two way communication between the creator and the listener uh, so what needs to be done to actually resolve this or can anything be done at all yeah yeah uh, great one um... I think, see, uh, podcast is, of course, a recorded uh, session, but there are today ephemeral and live and real time conversations happening, like the likes of Clubhouse, Twitter Spaces. And of course, at Hours, we are launching our, I mean, Hours Live is already out there. Uh, it's picking up momentum slowly. So, interactive is, uh, again, you know, uh, if this conversation were recorded and uploaded as a podcast, uh, there is interaction, right? The audience did interact with us. We interacted with each other. But uh, this world, whole world, uh, world interactive podcasts are very, very uh, difficult to kind of uh, solve for. Uh, so either there is like a synchronous communication like Clubhouse or there is an asynchronous one like podcast. But uh, anything in between, I think it all comes down to certain features. Like you can have poll, you can have some Q&A, you can have some comments and other stuff. I think then we go into the same space of a uh youtube or a twitch um, uh, twitch is a better example where it is interactive streaming uh, same way when podcasts are being created maybe there are some guests who are also part of it some fans are also part of it when a host is recording a podcast so i think uh we might see those formats or maybe gautam you could try some of those in your uh, <laughs> podcast you know invite top fans uh while you're recording your podcast so something like that. oh no i i i think uh, i think the more the ideas in this space the better so uh jumping to uh question number two apple's I, been rather sorry so many go on yeah i just wanted to add i think one of the ways to also do this is uh you know maybe the podcast can be created uh, by getting people to give, you know, ideas of what they want to hear. And it's yeah. a little like how yeah. you, you've heard musicians create songs out of people giving lyric uh, pointers, you know. I mean, there's been, uh, I think the, the most uh, popular name that people keep talking about is Imogen Heath, who actually created music where, you know, through social media, she had people actually giving words and she stitched it together. So I think, I mean, podcast, that's one yeah. basic way. The other yeah. is... What we've seen even in the post-COVID era where, you know, we've had recorded concerts being performed, but parallelly live, you know, through Zoom or whatever, you've actually had the fans getting to interact with the artists. So I think there are all of these different models, but podcast as a content is meant to, meant to be an experience to hear uninterrupted because you're, you're listening to what the person has to say. 
So I'm not too sure why yeah. you're hearing the content yeah. check be. Correct, correct. I mean, you know, and uh, one of the things that I've, I mean, I was researching about this and you saw a 2000% increase in live podcast shows across uh, the Western world. Uh, which is a great way to create interactivity. Obviously, this is pre-COVID, but in 2019, a 2,000% increase in, in podcast shows where people are going from location to location, booking entire or entire uh, halls, concert halls, and it was a new format altogether. So I move to my second question. Um, Apple has been relatively quiet. Um, in the podcasting space, uh, this is not my question. So if, if, if you have confused expressions, uh, uh, this is not my question. Apple has been relatively quiet in the podcasting space recently, uh, whereas they had made the first big waves uh, with this space. Uh, what do you think um, they're waiting for, if anything? And uh, is Apple going to sort of make a big emergence, uh, or, you know, uh, to sort of disrupt this space going forward? Does anybody want to take this question? No, I think we should leave Apple alone and celebrate what Ghana is doing, what you are doing, what Savan is doing. Uh, if they're not doing anything, it's their problem, man. So. Amen. Amen. Ram, I mean, just, you're a man after my heart. Uh, Apple might just my... come to you, about it. <laughs> <laughs> so final, final question that we have here is, uh, what is in store for small scale podcasters? Um, and how can they be made more incentivized? I do believe that Saumini, to a large degree, has al already answered this. Um, I would have, uh, I would have loved to answer this from a speaker's perspective, but uh, I think best to answer it from an artist's perspective. Uh, what, what is it that uh, is in store for small-scale podcasters in the time to come, Saumini? I'd, I'd love to direct this at you. So you know, I think uh, today every player whether it's an artist or an aggregator or say i mean you know in like when you look at in the label industry uh you know when they're looking at signing on new artists they're always trying to see what is the existing traction i think the focus should be to start it's it's like a merger and acquisition game you know uh you are creating enough of uh attraction to yourself or to your content for other people to see it as uh, something that they would want to either, you know, bring into their circle of things or invest into. But I think very importantly, any, I mean, any format that is new is going to take its time. And my recommendation would be do it organically and genuinely. Don't try to just show the numbers because if it doesn't stand authentic, it's it's this is going to fall through. You know, and, and if you're a podcaster who is a, a small time podcaster who's aggregating, you know, talent or, or content and wanting to look at bigger takers, I think the model still feels is still about the same. If you can't be showing revenue, show the community, show the content library. I think those are the only two, three ways. Uh, and mm. if we see today, even some of the biggest players are building the evaluation to be overtaken by the Googles and the Apple and all of that. So I think that 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 game is being played uh, even with the mid-level, uh, not just the small uh, players, you know. So Agreed. I think Agreed. the model remains the same. Yeah, you, you've got to grow it organically, uh, authentically, more than organically. You've got to grow it uh, authentically and, and work, uh, like you said, you know, collaborations. Uh, Look at how you can collaborate, make it a win-win situation for the creator as well as the platform. Yeah, I yeah. completely agree. And I'd I'll, I'll, I'll love to add, do it for the passion, get in for the right reasons and, you know, the rest will follow. Um, if you do it for the wrong reasons, you will continuously feel uh, on edge and you'll continuously feel as though the space isn't going anywhere. Um, yeah. So that about brings us to the end of this panel discussion. Uh, I'd love to close with some remarks. Um, I think, I don't know whether any of you uh, noticed, but I actually left out one anecdote um, <laughs> and I'm going to close with one anecdote. Uh, and I left it purposely for the end because I don't want everybody to judge me. So um, I actually sleep with speakers in my pillow, which I custom ordered from the West because they're pillows that have 
flat speakers within them so that I can listen to podcasts all night long. I didn't tell my wife this before uh, we got married, and we I listened to about fourteen hours of podcasts a day, and now she's married to me, so she can't do anything about it. Uh, and that's the truth of the matter. Um, I I'd love to thank each and every one of you for taking out the time to be on this panel. It's been like I said. A uh, very joyous and fun experience for me. I hope it's been the same for you. What a uh, illuminating and wonderful group of uh, speakers we've had here. Uh, thank you so much. And just before I sign off, um, I'd love to sort of once again touch upon what a special medium this is. It is the only medium, in my opinion, that is language agnostic. It doesn't care whether you're speaking in English. It doesn't care whether you're speaking in Hindi. It doesn't care whether you're speaking in Tamil, Gujarati, Bengali. It treats everybody the same. Uh, it's a medium that doesn't care about how rich you are um, because it's cheaper to create in the audio medium than it is to create in any other medium. And it doesn't care about how educated you are. Um, you can be an amazing storyteller if you are a Harvard grad. And you can be just as good of a storyteller if you only uh, passed uh, class one. And as an equalizer in that format, I don't believe that there's any other medium that comes close. So thank you guys so much. Uh, this industry needs people just like yourself, and I'm very honored to be a part of it. Uh, and and yeah, uh, so that's me signing off. And uh, look forward to speaking thank with you guys you. offline. Thank you, Gautam. Thank you. Thank you to all the panelists thank for joining in. Thanks. And on so, behalf so. of the entire IMI team, I would like to say that thanks to the panelists, thanks to the audience. And I think this was one of the fun sessions because, you know, it, it was so interactive with all the questions and the fun facts. So thanks again. And we will join you all with another session shortly. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. much. Thanks, Kanta. Thanks, Sri. Thanks, Mipul.